Hi everybody, thank you for joining our CTO Foresight series. It's a pleasure to have you here. My name is Shimlan Siddiqui, I'm CTO for Public Sector at NTT Data, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about a topic that I think is generally misunderstood, but one that impacts everyone, from commercial companies to consumers to governments alike, and especially government. And that's the topic of AI, or artificial intelligence. In a recent study, there was a finding that over 500 million labor hours were spent on manual processing and paperwork in the government. Uh, that amounts to about $16 billion roughly in, in salary costs. Now this is a real opportunity for the government to be able to do more with less, to be able to optimize business process and automate, and then apply artificial intelligence to really create more predictability and pattern matching and better decision making and insights. Today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about three things. First, demystifying uh, the evolution of uh, artificial intelligence. Second is really the demystification of the topic of artificial intelligence. And the third is gonna be you know, giving you some interesting use cases that maybe you haven't heard of. So we'll start with the evolution first. So there's been a lot of uh, growth and sophistication in activities within artificial intelligence over the last few years. It really started with the 80s and 90s where we saw the first generation of AI with expert systems and rule-based decision-making and decision support systems. We quickly moved uh, into the 2000s where we started seeing the second generation of AI type systems come into play. So statistical based systems, search based systems. Uh, around that same time, we started seeing the advent of uh, additional types of technologies coming in, Watson and Deep Blue. And if you further move into the, getting into the Siri, and then finally into the third generation, which is more cognitive applications, which is where we are today. And we're gonna continue to see these cognitive applications, things like AlphaGo, uh, Google's translation, or self-driving cars. These are all examples of this third generation of cognitive applications which are now bringing reasoning, intuition, and problem solving into computing environments. So a lot of exciting stuff. And so that's a little bit of an evolution. As AI technologies have evolved over the last few years, so too have the technologies within it. So here's the part where we just demystify a little bit of what artificial intelligence really contains. A lot of people misrepresent the different branches within AI. So I want to solidify and clarify that. So artificial intelligence really is a broader discipline which contains a number of initiatives, especially in public sector of interest. Things like, for example, speech to text, natural language processing, robotic process automation, machine learning, which really deals with predictability and, and, and classification. There's also a subdivision of machine learning, which is deep learning, which deals with uh, artificial neural networks, which really uh, deals with pattern recognition and classification of large data sets, larger than what machine learning would, would, would do. And we also have things like virtual cognitive agents like Amelia, things like virtual agents like Apple Siri, chatbots, etc. In fact, DARPA actually funded uh, what they call the Kalo Project, which was actually designed to provide cognitive assistance to the U.S. Army. And, and aspects of that uh, Kalo Project were then eventually used for uh, uh, or, or were representative of what Apple Siri is today. Now, some interesting use cases around artificial intelligence that you may or may not have heard of, but I think you should be aware of. First one is around multilingual analysis and speech recognition using deep learning technologies to protect the border, especially within crowded areas within a port, being able to identify and have smart microphones capturing unstructured data from different crowds, different languages, and then being able to synthesize and process all of that data and provide an analysis on what languages were spoken and, and what the exact translation was in each of those languages. Very innovative stuff, but uh, complex in the back end, but helps protect the homeland. A second one is around case management, being able to protect and predict the threat level uh, and uh, potential anomalies in case management data. Uh, we're seeing that case management data is at the heart of a lot of what government does. Uh, and most of those case management systems are not protected properly. And so being able to identify and use applied machine learning technologies to actually not only uh, look at patterns within the data, but also be able to predict possible threats internal and external. And then finally, being able to augment reasoning for the intelligence case officer uh, in, in intelligence communities. So these are just three interesting examples of use cases in artificial intelligence, among many others. Folks, I appreciate you being here. 
Stay tuned for our next series within artificial intelligence as we break some of these topics down further. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you very much.